Welcome back. The scariest part of JavaScript. This. Some would say the most confusing. Some even hate it so much that they try to avoid it at all costs in their code because it creates so much confusion. Let's try and decode this mystery and figure out what this is all about. Now, keep in mind, this is a topic we're going to really dive deep into during the object-oriented programming section of the course. But we are focusing on learning the fundamentals of this keyword in this section, so that when this term comes up later on in the course, we have our foundation ready. So what is this? And although it looks intimidating, this isn't that hard. Because all that it means is this. This is the object that the function is a property of. That's it. So what does that mean? Well, this is the object that the function is a property of. Simply means that we have an object. And this object has some function. And inside of this function, when we do something, we have access to the this keyword. And this refers to the object that the function is a property of. Still confused by this? Let's look at an example. If I just simply run this here, if I click run, well, this environment won't let me work with this because of some safeguards in place. So let's open up our developer console. And in here, type in this. And if I hit enter, I have the window object. That's what this is referring to. Because remember, this gets set in our execution context as window initially, right? Remember our diagram. When the global execution context starts during the creation phase, we create the global object and this, and they equal each other. In this case, the window object is our global object. So what if we do something like here, where I have function A that will just console log this. If I run A, what do you think the answer will be? Well, we get window once again. This is equal to window. And why is that? Remember the definition. This is the object that the function is a property of. That means we're calling window dot a and running it. That's what we're doing up here. So what is the object that the function is a property of? Well, the function is a property of the window object. So that's what this is. It's the window. And this should make sense, right? But here's the problem. When it comes to coding, this part of JavaScript is a little bit weird in the sense that most of the time when we're coding, we never want this to refer to the global object but obviously this happens all the time. And as we'll see later on, one of the pitfalls with this is that we unexpectedly have this referred to the window object when we think it should be something else. And if we go back to our example and create function B this time, and with function B, if I use use strict here, and I console.log, this. Well, if I run B here, I'll get undefined. And remember what I said about the use strict tag. Use strict was added to JavaScript as a way for us to avoid the common mistakes that can happen with JavaScript. When the language was originally designed, it wasn't perfect. And there were bits and pieces of mistake. And Things like use strict allow us to not have this, where this refers to the window object. And use strict can be added at the beginning, the first line of a function, or at the beginning of our script. Now, 
I know you're still confused about this. So let's give a better example. Remember our global execution context. We get this out of the box, but also when we have a new function, we have this as well. But what's the point of it then? If most of the time we don't even care that this points to the global object, why did they even include this in the language? Well, let's have a look at an example where this actually becomes useful and the reason that this keyword was created. Let's create an object here. And this object will have a name that is Billy. And Billy can sing. So we'll have a function here. And inside of this function, we can just return Billy singing, la la la. And we wanted to say la 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 Billy or use the name property. Hmm. But how can we do that? Inside of an object, how can we access a property so that this sing function can sing Billy's name? I mean, we could write Billy like this, but what if this object changes and all of a sudden it becomes Veronica? Now we have to also come over here and change this to Veronica. Instead, we can use the this keyword. I can simply say this dot name. And why is that? Because remember our definition. This is the object that the function is a property of. This is the object that the sync function is a property of. So we're simply saying here object dot name. But obviously object.name wouldn't work in here, so we have to have something else, like the this keyword. So that if I run object.sing and I click run here, look at that. I have la 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 Veronica. And if I change this back to Billy, I don't have to change anything in the function. It gives me the correct sing function. And by the way, we can actually convert this to a newer syntax, write it like this, which also works. And it's a little bit cleaner. So let's go back to that function. This is the object that the function is a property of. And this is the rule of thumb that I like to use. This refers to whatever is to the left of the dot. Remember, with an object, we access properties and methods of an object and a method of an object is a function so methods are functions that are inside of objects so the property and methods can be accessed with this dot notation and when it comes to this this simply refers to hey inside of this function what's to the left of the dot well object and that's all you really need to know about this it's whatever to the left of the dot, which is the object that the function is a property of. Now, I know you're still confused. I still don't get why this is that useful. Let's use another example. Let's say that in this object, I want to create another function that says sing again. And sing again, and let's make this a little bit bigger. There you go. Sing again should well sing again we want to run this function or perhaps sing again does something a little bit different maybe it adds an exclamation mark at the end how would we go about doing this well i can just copy whatever the function does here and just add an exclamation mark at the end so that when i run sing again and i click run Oh, and I have to make sure I add a comma here. Let's click run. I have sing again with the exclamation mark. But this isn't good, right? One of the principles of being a good programmer is dry. Do not repeat yourself. And this is a simple example with, well, one line of code when it comes to a function. But 
you see here that we're just copying code, the exact same thing over and over. A better way of doing this is to call the sync function and then add the exclamation mark to it. Once again, if we change something, let's say we change something in the sync function, we don't have to change it here as well. So what we would do in this case, as you may have guessed, is this dot sync, which returns this piece of string, and then add the exclamation mark at the end. If I click run, look at that. It still works. We're not repeating ourselves. We're keeping things dry. That's very good. Here are the two main benefits of this and why the this keyword was created. The number one reason, it gives us methods or it gives methods access to their object. It gives sing access to the object so that it can use properties and methods within that object. So it's siblings. The second reason that the this keyword is so important, or it benefits us, is that we can execute the same code for multiple objects. What does this one mean? Number one, that makes sense. We have access now to all these methods and properties on our object which is great. And we can keep our code dry like I've shown you here. But what about this second part? Well, let's talk about the second part or the second benefit of this with another example. Let's create a function. And this function will be, let's say, important person. And this important person function, simply console.logs, this dot name. Now, if I run this, this is going to refer to the window object because when I call important or I can't spell important person, important person, and I run this, it's being called with the global object window dot important person. To the left of the dot is the window. So this is going to refer to window. It's like doing window.name. And window.name won't really know anything about this. So let's create that property. I'm going to create a name property that is sunny. And I'm also going to create two objects. The first object will have name. Cassie. And we're also going to have the important person function from up over here. That's going to say important person. And then the second object will have the same thing. We'll have object two. Name is going to be Jacob. And they're going to use important person. Now, right over here, I'm demonstrating the second important use when it comes to the this keyword. It executes same code for multiple objects. I've written a function once, and now multiple objects can use this. Object one has important person method, and object two has important person method once again. And as long as I just change the code only here, both of them are going to get the changes. If I add an exclamation mark here, both of these have the same code. Again, keeping our code dry. But let's see what happens now. Let's say that I console log here and let's test this out. If I console log, name here, what would the result be? Or more importantly, if I do import and person, and I run this function, what do you think I'll get? 
who's the important person here? Remember, the important person function simply runs console log this.name. The important person in this case is what's to the left or who's calling import person? Well, the global object window is calling person. So we get Sunny because Sunny is the property on the global object which we created. Remember, this is a global variable. But what if I do object one dot important person? Who's the important person? Well, who's calling it? Object one is calling important person, the left of the dot. So the important person in this case is Cassie because we're calling this method and this is now referring to, this is a function that is a method of object one. And if I change this to object two, I get Jacob. How cool is that? Those are the two main benefits of this. It gives methods access to their object, and it also executes same code for multiple objects. Both things making our code cleaner, simpler. We're not repeating ourselves. So to review, this is usually determined by asking, hey, execution context, what called the function? What called me? So you can think of this as who called me? Who's that person that run me as a function? And the this keyword acts as a placeholder and will refer to whichever object called that method. Now, there's an interesting thing that happened here, which we're going to visit in the next video. I'll see you in that one. Bye-bye.